if Brooks Robinson just happened to see me throwing a baseball down there and say, look, I saw you throwing the ball last year. How long have you been throwing the ball like that? I said, uh, 15 years or so. And he said, nobody give you an opportunity to play? I said, right out, no, where from? And that day, Mike Stanley was catching me and Rich Gedman, and nobody could voice their opinion better than two guys that caught me in the major league saying that my stuff was better than it was when I was a kid. Right now, I'm playing amateur baseball, and I don't pitch. I play short, and I play third. And uh, I play right here in the Providence League, uh, men's senior baseball, wooden bat men's senior baseball. And, uh, you know, guys often ask me to pitch because they reminisce and they want to see you out there. But I just knew how to pitch. I ain't never liked pitching. I just knew how. But I, the game of baseball and what I love about it, uh, believe it or not, something that I never got a chance to do was run the bases and swing the bat. And that's what I enjoy doing. But if somebody told me right now, you know, we, we'll do you like Pedro, we'll give you an opportunity to go back to the minor leagues and see what you can do, I would take that up. And I'm sure that I will open some eyes because I know what I can do. And, and as soon as someone see me do that, they'll know that I'm not lying about it. All I can do is keep doing what I'm doing and never know. Maybe I might get a chance to go out and do my Satchel Page impression. I'm here to speak on him from what was told to me uh, by the man that uh, his son caught me in the major league, uh, Haywood Sullivan. Uh, he caught Satchel Page at that age. So he, he, he told me when he saw me as a young kid that I reminded him every day of Satchel Page and uh, that I've always often heard from a lot, a lot of people that know baseball that if you keep doing what you're doing and you stay healthy, you'll pitch till you're 60 years old easy. So, and, and what I'm seeing today in the game, I won't criticize anything, but I don't like what I'm seeing in the major leagues. I don't like seeing guys throw 96 and 97 miles an hour and can't get people out. I don't, I, that's, that bothers me and it makes, it ponders me to wonder how a kid is blessed with such ability that somewhere your mind hadn't opened up to the game, uh, pitch by pitch. Not game by game, not day by day, pitch by pitch. I, would, I don't have anything that I would regret about the game or anything, but it's some, it's some days that I think about it. If I'd have got more rest, I would have probably felt better that day. Or if I wouldn't have did this, or if I wouldn't have did that, I would have felt better that day. But I would like to think that um, it is what it is, and if I had an opportunity to do it all over again, I might approach it just a little bit different. But I don't, nobody's going to tell me when I'm going to stop playing baseball. I'm 70% as good as anybody throwing baseball anywhere. That's anywhere, major leagues anywhere. Anywhere, right now today. Yeah, but I don't, like, I don't like walking around with dynamite stuck to my shoulder and I can't use it. I don't like that. Nobody throws the baseball nowhere better than I can throw a baseball. Nobody, nowhere. I hate the baseball because it's a difference in control and command. I had what you call command. Anytime I wanted to throw a baseball where I wanted it to go, it was going that spot. Anytime I wanted it, all night and all day. And uh, you couldn't get 10 major leaguers right now to hit 10 spots in a row, in the same spot, in a row. You couldn't get 10, no matter who they are. You couldn't Great find 10 time major time. leaguers. <laughs> and the one that could yeah. do it, he ain't playing no more. That right? Greg Maddox. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 10 times in a row they couldn't do it if they had to. I could do that shit with a blindfold on when I was a kid. You understand what I'm saying? I just see little bitty inklets in the game that bothers me when I see a kid throw five wild pitches in a ball game and I ain't thrown five wild pitches in my whole career. It bothers me, you know, uh, that, that, you know, what do you guys call it major leaguers? Because they got 97, 98 mile an hour fastballs. Uh, that's not major league. That's just a kid can throw the hell out of the baseball because I'm not getting the results that I want to see. There ain't no way a guy throwing 96 mile an hour and he's a starter shooting average 10 punch outs a game. Average 10. On a bad night, you got 10 too as well where the umpires are, are too involved into the game right now. I don't like that either. I don't like people wanting dugouts and things. We grown men. Right now and then I would find it quite uncomfortable if I can't pitch inside when I want to, how I want to all night. Every batter's supposed to get knocked <clears throat> on his ass all night. Every batter. Every batter that walks in there or two supposed to be worried about the ball coming up around your knocking. Every batter. Supposed to nobody's everybody's comfortable in the battle box. With or two they comfortable. Oh, be for real. They're supposed to be leaving their shoes. But the umpire tells you, you know, so now you got ERAs to play. Now you got bad averages. these kids. They can just lay out on the plate and do what they want now. So I don't know if they're good hitters or not. Because when I was playing, you're not doing that to me. So I can't say who's a good hitter. I can't, 
I can't say that because I don't see you getting knocked on your ass. So I can't, I, I don't see no intimidation out there anymore. And nobody's striking fear anymore. So I don't know if the game is what it is. I just told him, I said, I said, hey, I caught you. I, you remember I caught your first game now, don't you? He goes, remember what that was? He couldn't remember. I said, it was in Texas. I said, you don't remember about that? Is if you cross me up one time, you cross me up 25 times. I'd, I'd call a slider, he'd throw a fastball. I'd call a fastball, he'd throw a slider. He didn't have his glasses on. He didn't like how he, he didn't like how he looked with his glasses on, or they felt heavy on his head, he said. So that night on the plane, it was getaway night, and um, I walked by him on the plane. We're, you know, we're in flight, and he's, he's reading the sporting news. He's got it this close to his eye. He's, he's, like, he's like this. I said, can. I said, you got that paper close enough to you there, buddy? He says, oh, I forgot my glasses. I said, that was the problem that I know. And you know what? This guy was one of the best competitors. Of it. Him, Eckersley, and Bill Lee were the best competitors on the mound. Uh, you wanted to play harder for him. And uh, another thing I remember about Ken was he used to tie Reggie, Reggie Jackson up. He had that screwball to the point where Reggie would yell out in the dugout after he got him out. Throw a freaking fastball. Throw a fa You know what? When a guy does that, you know you got him. So that's what I remember about Ken. Yeah, you know what? He's, well, he's the second coming of Satchel Paige. You and I both know that. <laughs> you know what? And it didn't matter who was, on, who was, who, who was hitting. He was going to go at you with, with five pretty good pitches and stuff. But uh, he competed real well. You know, and a guy that's six foot, maybe 140 pounds, mm -hmm. he hasn't changed a bit. He was a, he was a character and a competitor.